Hello everyone, this is Alex from Adored TV, back after a brief hiatus. So today, in our first traditional video of the new year, I'll be doing a driver overhead comparison on AMD versus NVIDIA, using the 3060 and the 6600 XT as our cards, with the Ryzen 5 5600X and Ryzen 3 3100 as our CPUs, to try to see how much performance you'll lose by running a lower-end CPU with either one of these cards. The quad core should be a pretty good stand-in for the older quad cores that some of you might still have in your system, you know, whether it be Intel or AMD, or those older Ryzen 5s and 3 CPUs. Also, the 5600X is one of the fastest CPUs on the market today for gaming. Our viewers might have seen coverage similar done about a year or so ago by Hardware Unboxed, and that did a pretty good job showcasing the performance differences between AMD and NVIDIA with CPU bottlenecks. Their conclusion was that in DX12, NVIDIA GPUs perform worse than AMD GPUs when the load is primarily on the CPU. This is due to NVIDIA's drivers having a higher core dependency, so with an older or slower CPU, Radeon cards can outperform NVIDIA. This was interesting with the 3090 and the 3070, but I wanted to get some more data on GPUs that people likely will be able to get in their hands. But before we do that, let's take a quick word from our sponsor. Our sponsor today is VIP Your CD Key, who's partnered with us in adding a discount code. This is an OEM code and a legal key that can be upgraded to Windows 10 for free if you feel inclined. Thanks for them for making videos like this possible. Once on the web page, make sure to click the discount code ADTV for 25% off. Once you input the code, your key should be about just under $15. And you can either use PayPal or your credit card to purchase the key. I personally use PayPal. Once the order is complete, wait a few minutes. It took me about two minutes for the purchase to go through. Once that's done, type in activation settings in your Windows search bar and click add product key. Once that's open, simply take the key that is on your web page, copy it and paste it into the bar like so. And there you go. You now have an activated key of Windows for less than $15. Cards we're using today is an XFX 6600 XT Mark 308 and the EVGA 3060 XC that I borrowed for a few days. Our test bench is as follows. A Ryzen 3 3100, a Ryzen 5 5600 X, an XFX 6600 XT Mark 309, and an RTX 3060 from EVGA the ASUS ROG HERO X570, 16 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z Gold 3600 MHz, which is at CL14, a Samsung 980 Pro SSD, and a Corsair MP600 SSD, and an 850-watt gold EVGA PSU. So the games we are testing today are Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Horizon Zero Dawn, Watch Dogs Legion, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Call of Duty Warzone, Fortnite in both DX12 and DX11, Metro Exodus in DX12 and DX11, Tomb Raider in DX12, Doom Eternal, and Cyberpunk 2077. As this video is more of a different look where we'll compare AMD's more affordable option that is currently selling for about $550 at a new egg near you, as well as NVIDIA's 3060, which are going for about $500 to $600 as well, if you can find them. Our purpose here today is to see how much you could lose by adding a new GPU to a system with an older or slower CPU in these modern titles. Again, some settings here are set to medium. Yes, I know the market is terrible and it hasn't gotten a whole lot better, but let's move on to the tests. For our first title, we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is at 1080p with medium settings. AMD has a pretty significant lead here and generally does quite well in this game. In the differences between the two sets of CPUs, we see that there is a 2% difference between the 5600X and the 3100 on the average FPS with the 6600 XT. That gap extends to about 5% with the 3060. In the minimums, the 5600X and the 3100 have a larger gap when using the Radeon part. That is about 7%. The NVIDIA GPU keeps the two CPUs within about 3% of each other. Although, it's important to remember the gap between these GPUs is about 30 frames in-game. CSGO is the second title in our benchmark titles, and is an example of an older DX11 title that many people are still playing. 
For this, we use the CPU benchmark from the Steam Workshop at medium settings. In this title, we see the 6600 XT performing 44% slower with a quad-core installed over the 6-core Beast CPU. When you switch over to NVIDIA, you see it only performs 30% slower, although it loses to NVIDIA with a faster CPU installed by about 10% or so. This is likely due to AMD just running better at higher FPSs, but NVIDIA being better with CPU bottlenecks in, in older DX11 titles. It is likely we would see similar things happening in titles like LOL or Dota, although I have heard smart access memory does help with Valve titles quite a bit. On to our next title, Cyberpunk 2077. Cyberpunk 2077 was a very hyped title and is also quite graphically demanding. It is running at medium settings today at 1080p. When the Radeon GPU is installed, we see a difference of about 30% between the averages when using a 5600X and a Ryzen 3 quad-core. With the NVIDIA card installed, this gap is quite a bit tighter at 20%, but this is mostly due to the 3060 doing worse in this title. Our Radeon card does about 11% better on average and just under 10% faster in the 99th percentile. Okay, now, moving on to Doom Eternal. With the Doom Slayer coming back in one of the most popular titles of the past few years, it's tested at 1080p on medium settings in Vulcan in the mission on the screen. We see NVIDIA taking a lead here in both configurations and AMD just seems to hit a bottleneck in the average FPS where we see the 3060 in its slower quad-core configuration beats out the Radeon card with the 5600X. Now, moving on to Fortnite, this is a game we tested in both DX11 and DX12 on the low settings in the benchmark on the Creative Island. Let's take a dive into the results here. You can see here that the frame rate increases dramatically when moving from DX12 to DX11. And previously, AMD had lagged behind NVIDIA significantly, but pulls ahead in this newer API. Here we can see, as previously noted, AMD takes a massive improvement in DX12, especially when it comes to CPU bottlenecks. When you're comparing these two APIs, you will see a 50% jump in performance with the Ryzen 3, with the Radeon part, and a 83% improvement when using the faster 5600X and a Radeon GPU in DX12. It also has its 99th percentiles faster than its averages on both CPUs. The NVIDIA jump is nowhere near as impressive, but it's still a rather significant jump. With the quad-core part on the RTX GPU, we see a 10% jump and a 28% jump when using the 5800X. This helps bridge that gap that is traditionally seen in Unreal games with DX11 from Radeon to NVIDIA. Now on to our next title, Horizon Zero Dawn. This game is often used as a good example of a graphically demanding game. We test using the built-in benchmark at original settings. Frankly, both systems perform about the same here regardless of GPU with the Ryzen 5 Zen 3 part. The Radeon part is about 5% faster when using the older quad-core, which is just another win for the AMD part here. Next, we have Metro Exodus, which is running at medium settings in both DX11 and DX12 using the built-in benchmark. Mostly we see performance here being similar, though DX12 lowers performance significantly on the NVIDIA GPU, while the Radeon part sees a decent uptick in 99th percentile frames in DX12. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I had some issues testing in DX12, and due to time constraints with the NVIDIA GPU, I'm just sharing the DX11 results. We test using the built-in benchmark. For this test, overall, we see the Radeon card performing much better with the 5600X and beating the NVIDIA card overall. The 3100 seems to perform worse in the 99th percentiles with the Radeon card here, though, and it's about the same in the averages. Next, on to Call of Duty Warzone, which we use the training match in low settings in DX12. Here we see NVIDIA takes the lead in the CPU constrained situation, which is a reversal of most of our other tests of about 7%. And on average, FPS through 99th percentile seems rather close. NVIDIA also has a lead in the 99th percentile, so about 10% with, with the 5600X installed, but the averages are about the same. Finally, our last title, we have Watch Dogs Legion, which is also tested at medium settings and, you guessed it, 1080p, using the in-game benchmark. This is another DX12 title, we see Radeon performing better in here. About 5% in the 99th percentiles with the 5600X installed, and just over 10% on average. The 3100 also performs here better with the 6600 XT installed in the average FPS. So what would we gather from all this information provided? Well, I would think the evidence should mostly agree with Steve from Gamers Nexus's findings that in older titles, NVIDIA's solutions is especially better when limited for CPU cores. 
However, AMD's solution just seems to fly when using DX12. Most of our DX12 titles, you can see both configurations with the Radeon part installed just run fantastically. That being said, if you are using an older CPU and you're planning on playing newer titles with it, the Radeon solution might be the option for you. Looking at this data, overall the Radeon 6600 XT with the 5600X installed in all of our games tested is just a hair faster on average when compared to the RTX 3060. This is with Sam on and just a few percent faster than the 99th percentiles. Although that Radeon part does fare slightly worse with the slower CPU. This is generally worse if you're playing older DX12 titles. DX11 titles, again, still favor AMD a bit more, and this would likely be even more so the case with older CPUs, like your friend who's just still using a Sandy Bridge i7 2700K, which he keeps saying is totally fine. Your answer here really does depend on the games that you plan on playing and how quickly you plan on upgrading to a new CPU. The situation where most people are finding themselves as graphics card pricing starts coming down is they start wondering if they can pick up a newer GPU or hold out a few months for a faster CPU or just wait on perhaps some future CPUs like a Zen 4 or Intel Raptor Lake CPU. I think the answer that we've seen here is kind of clear that while an upgrade would be sufficient, in most of these single player titles and in games that we've shown here, the GPU probably should be the first thing that you pick up. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to let us know what you think in the comments. Leave us a thumbs up, subscribe, and check out our merch store and our Patreon. Thanks and have a wonderful day.